What's up everyone, this is Bam Black Ops, bringing you episode 1 of my new series here on the Hoppy Community Channel, Head of the Class. Basically this will be a series of videos to test each gun from Call of Duty Black Ops from every class, match them up, compare the pros and cons, and find the best gun of each category. To test each gun, I used them online, I tested out lag free in combat training, and in private matches to test out the recoil. Lastly, we look at the in detail stats for each gun. The in-game stats in Call of Duty, in all the Call of Duty games, have been terrible throughout the years. They're, they're not true at all. Pretty much the only thing you can trust is the speed. That's pretty much it. Den Kirsten, on the other hand, he's been opening the PC games uh, since Call of Duty 4, and he kind of looked at every single stat from the guns, pulled it out, and lets us see it. So we'll use that, because uh, it's much more effective, and they're the real stats. So, here we go. Episode 1 starts now. Which assault rifle is the head of the class? In the assault rifle category, there are really four different types of guns. There's the three round burst guns, the M16 and the G11, the semi automatic guns, the M14 and the FN FAL, there's the high power, low fire rate guns, the Galil, AK 47, and Commando, and lastly, the high fire rate, low power guns, the FAMAS and the AUG. There's one more assault rifle in this class, the Enfield, but it really is the worst of the bunch. It has low fire rate and low power, and the same accuracy as the, G as the Galil and the FAMAS, so really, it's a pointless gun. Let's start out with the three round burst guns, the M16 versus the G11. Each player in Black Ops has 100 health points. You die when your health goes down to zero. The M16 power is 40-30, meaning it's three bullets up close to get the kill and four bullets from afar. Of course, this is a burst gun, so because there's three bullets in each burst, it's one burst from up close for the kill, one burst from medium range for the kill, and two bursts from far. The G11 does 35 and 25 damage, but really, do the math, it's the same exact thing, because it's still one burst from medium and close range for the kill, and two bursts from long range. Now, I'm sure like you, we've gotten, we've all gotten plenty of hit markers with the M16 and the G11. Uh, you know, even after one, th two, three, four burst shots, and you finally get the kill. And that's because accuracy and fire rate are the two main factors with that. The kick of the M16 is absolutely wonderful. It's got a great recoil. Uh, you can see here that all the shots are right down the middle pretty much. They're, you know, they're in that same exact spot. That's why it's uh, a really good gun for that. The G11 goes up and to the right, a little bit up and to the right. Um, but really, when after each sh shot, it kind of jumps right back to the same spot, so it's not that big of a deal. The range of the M16 is a little bit better at 50 meters. The M16's damage goes from 40 to 30. Um, it, at, the, at the 50 meters is when it starts to fall down, and at 30, at 62 meters is when it drops down to 30. Well, the G11 starts to drop at 37, and then it tails out at 50 meters. So uh, you look at that, and you think the M16 is much better long-distance gun, and that would be true if it weren't for the attachments. The G11 can put on the sniper scope, and it's automatically... It's like a three-round burst sniper. It's it's still two two bursts for the kill, but it's much more effective at long range than the M16 because of that. The fire rate of the G11 is much much better than the M16. Those bullets fly out so much faster, and you get the one burst kills a lot more often. Through my playtime, I realized that it's just so much a better gun because of that. And even though the M16, you could do all those other um, the versatile attachments in comparison because you got the the you know if you want to put a silencer on it or a red dot or whatever. But in the end, close range, long range, and everywhere in between, the G11 gets it done because it's, for the most part, you get much more, much more often you're getting those one burst kills. And that's what it's all about with using the three burst kills. You don't want to have to go into your second, third, fourth shot. Um, otherwise, you'll probably get beat out by the automatics. Now on to the single fire assault rifles, the M14 and the FN FAL. The M14 and the FAL do the same exact damage at the same exact range, 50-40. There's no difference. They also have the same fire rate. The only difference is in the multipliers. Um, all assault rifles do 1.4 times the damage if it's a headshot, but the M14 does 1.5 times the damage, and it also does 1.5 times the damage for the neck. What does this mean? It means the FAL and the M14 both do two, bur two shots for close range, and three shots for long range for the kill. However, uh, if the M14, if you get headshots with those, then they're going to be um, two shots even at long range for both guns. But if you get a neck shot with the M14, it can be a two two shot kill. And the FNFAL, there's no multiplier for the neck, so you're not going to get that two shot kill at long range, even if you hit him in the neck. It has to be a headshot. 
the accuracy um, for the M14 is pretty, it, on paper it looks pretty good because it's straight, it doesn't kick to the right or to the left, and that's definitely true, but as you can see here, it kicks straight up right into the sky. So if there's somebody jumping in around the corner, uh, you're going to start, you know, maybe two guys, you'll just pull that trigger like crazy because that's what single fire guns are all about, your trigger finger, right? Just slam that trigger as hard as you can. The FAL goes a little bit to the side, but nowhere near up. So what does that mean? It means that you're going to get those kills. You can. I, I've got plenty of double sprays, triple sprays. I think I even got a quad spray with the FAL. So in the end, e even with the grip, the M14 didn't do much about the recoil. It's all about the recoil. If it weren't for the fact that this gun just shoots straight up in the air, the M14 would be much better. The winner is the FAL. Next is the low power, high fire rate guns. The FAMAS versus the AUG. This one's a little bit tough. They have the same damage, the same range, and the same fire rate. The only difference is the recoil, the reload time, and the drop and raise time. The recoil for the FAMAS is up and to the right, and the AUG is straight up. Uh, when you use a FAMAS at long range, it's not as effective as the AUG because that kick goes a little bit to the right and it's kind of hard to control. The AUG at controlled burst is a little bit better at long range. But really, you got to use these guns like they're SMGs anyway. Uh, they're a little better than SMGs at mid-range, and they're pretty much just as good at close range. So you don't really want to get in a firefight at long range. So if you're using the AUG or the or the FAMAS, you got to try to keep it um, medium to close range. At long range, you're going to get beat. So the winner out of these two is the FAMAS. Last but not least, we have the low fire rate, high powered guns. The Galil, the AK-47, and the Commando. The damage for all these is 40 and 30. The fire rate and the range is exactly the same. The only difference is in recoil, reload, and raise and drop time. Dan Kearson's stats about the Commando and the AK are perfect. You can see here that they're exactly the same here with the recoil of each gun. And in my experience, I definitely noticed that. They just they don't really shoot too far to the right or the left. It's pretty much only straight up. The Galil doesn't kick straight quite as hard, but it does click a little bit, kick a little bit to the right. And I realized at long range, that's a little bit harder to, to control. So I, I like the Commando and the AK a little bit better. But there's not a huge difference here. Uh, basically, the Commando and the AK are the same exact guns. The only difference is the reload and raise and drop time. On an empty click, the AK-47 takes 3.25 seconds to reload. And the Commando takes 2.55 seconds. On a clip with bullets still in it, the AK takes 2.5 seconds. And the Commando takes 2.05 seconds. So, really, it's not a big difference, but the winner here is the Commando. But you can't go wrong with all three of these guns. They're all very, very good. So, let's recap. Which of the three-round bursts is the better gun? It's kind of ugly, but the G11 gets it done. The semi-automatic single-fire guns? Bring on that trigger figure and the FNFAL. Low power, high fire rate, the FAMAS wins it. And low fire rate, high power is the Commando. But not the one that you can stab someone from 200 feet with. So, of all the 10 assault rifles, which one is ahead of the class? You can slap a suppressor on it, red dot, or anything on it, go close range, long range, and in between, and you should have success with the Commando, the best assault rifle in the game. Of course, they're all good in their own right, and I'm sure you can succeed with any of them. Hopefully, from what you learned, you, it'll help you pick out your own favorites, and down below you can comment on which gun you like best. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope you learned a lot. I know I did, just from making these videos. I, I learned a whole bunch and my games improved just from doing this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Check out my channel, there's other cool stuff. YouTube.com slash BamBlackOps. Episode 2 of Head of the Class is coming soon. Which SMG is the best? We'll find out then. See you next time guys.